Hey guys, Wonklo here. I hope all of you are doing well and having a really good day. If you do have a nerd eggs or nerd Q eggs, stick with me because there's an update. So here we are again on GitHub as usual. We do have a new update for all the nerd eggs or nerd QX devices that are out there. If you do have one, stick to this because it's really important. There are a couple of bug fixes and improvements that are necessary to talk about. We are currently at the version 1.0.27 and the very first and important thing here is a note on this release. Please note there has been a change to the over temperature shutdown behavior. On devices equipped with a BM1368 EG, the Nerd QX Plus, the shutdown now relies on the actual chip temperatures. The maximum temperature among all chips is shown in the web UI as the ASIC temperature, which means the displayed value may be higher than before. So, this is really important. If you do have a Nerd QX Plus and you do have n some not proper cooling for your ASIC chips, make sure to verify and double check on that because maybe you need to switch to a cooling solution which is appropriate. But as far as I do know, all the sellers that are producing and selling these Nerd QX Pluses, they are shipping them with some sufficient cooling methods and big heat sinks. So if you do have one, for example, from Bitmaker, make sure to check the links in the video description down below to get yourself one and always make sure to use the code one clue because then you get a coupon on all these websites, then you will have a great time with these devices. But let's dive into all the things that have changed here. So the first thing is a replacement from CJSON over to Arduino JSON. And the reason for that is being that Arduino JSON in C++ is just way better because it's it's smaller in the size of what it needs and what it relies on. It is just quicker. And the hope of switching from CJSON to Arduino JSON is just to have something that is a little bit more smooth or better for the purpose what the Nerd X devices are for. There's also some improvement on the Stratum. Now it only accepts a connection from a healthy and valid JSON response, which means this is some sort of a yeah, health check on your device between your device and the pool. And if this connection is healthy, it will allow these connections. If there's anything going wrong with this connection, then it will just not allow it. There is also now another fix, which is on the Wi-Fi power savings. It could have been that your device goes for whatever reason into Wi-Fi saving. Now this is no longer happening. Usually this was never happening, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Another cool thing here is a consistently change in the NVS default values. So now this has been a great default for all these values. So you guys, you do see things that are changing are not always in the front end or on major things that you do notice, but there are plenty of changes for the back end and in general, making devices more reliable, more stable, and just better in the whole term of what they do. There's also a change on the TPS temperature. It just lock this in the locks so you were just able to check out the tps temperature in your locks now you should also be able to see this in the dashboard and there's a little bit of a cleanup on the code as well for the tps there's also increasement on the stratum buffer size so now you do have a little bit more memory for the stratum connection which is great and helps hopefully with bigger connection streams in general there's also a little bit of an override previously it was able to shut down your asics or in general your device if there was some weird zero value going into the temperature this is now no longer happening as well as there is, as explained previously, the change to the actual ASIC temperature from the BM1368 boards, and now it does show this and shuts them down per ASIC, which is awesome. There's also change from the tag previously. You probably noticed that, that the ESP miner for all these NerdX devices is a fork from the original Nerd, uh, from the original ESP miner and then moved over to C++. So it's, it was a fork, but it's now completely re rewritten and it just uses barely a couple of parts that we had previously. The functionality is basically the same, but things changed. And now the tag is also NerdX. So now the tag on, on a couple of components has also changed. Instead of showing BitX restarted in this one page, it actually shows you NerdX restarted, which is a great improvement. 
Also, there is an increasement on the certain buffer size in general. So now let's hop over to the Web UI and let's check out what's new there. Well, apart from the exit temperature that we do see down here, nothing. Everything stays the same. This update is just in general really great for the reliability and the purpose of having a stable release out there. So with this update, your device should be even more stable if this is an increment of it than before. With that, I thank everybody for watching and tuning in here. If you do like today's video, make sure to like and subscribe it and stick with me because I'm updating you on everything that's happening in the open source mining scene. Thanks for watching. See you next time.